Hi there, my name is Tennille, and this is another episode of Cluster B Classes. Today we are going to cover flying monkeys. First, I'd like to tell you that I'm still offering this course, and it has been slashed down significantly. I want you guys to be able to learn to deal with these guys. And first you have to go way back and clean out your mental closets and attics. So check the link in my bio of the channel and let's get started. So I was watching a clip of the Oz where, um, I believe it's her Elzelia or something like that, the one of the witches. And she's saying, you know, don't nobody bring me no bad news, no bad news. And I thought to myself, I'm watching this scene. And if I wouldn't have gone through gang stalking and dealing with uh, cluster B disordered persons within my family and without my family, uh, I, I wouldn't, I would have still seen this as a, you know, a hip jam and it is, it's a hip jam. I mean, geez, it's, it's very creative, you know, version of the wizard of Oz. And I think this one was done in 1994 or something like that. I'm not, not sure. I got to look it up, but you know, there's clips on YouTube um, but you know, I've been feeling nostalgic anyway. So I was just like, wow. But when I saw this clip and I also looked at the Oz, the original clip when she sends the monkey out, the monkey flying monkeys out and the original clip from the original movie, she states, don't worry. They're not going to give you any trouble because I sent insects to basically take their energy to weaken them. And I thought about it. So that is the purpose of flying monkeys. The, the, they got multiple purposes, as I've experienced. But when the narcissist or borderline personality or any uh, person, individual with a, a cluster B uh, personality disorder, feels that you're not complying, the more they send out their monkeys. So the monkeys, it's not just their job to gaslight you and you know an example of gaslighting is uh, I was living out of a U-Haul last year and I would have these monkeys come around and uh, tell me oh your tail lights out now mind you I've been driving this van for months <clears throat> and I've switched them out and da 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 right so I know the maintenance on it and it would have gotten me if I didn't know my van. I would have been like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't want to get a ticket. But I didn't react in the way that they thought that I, I should react. And basically what all I would do was roll up my window. And um, it was actually really scary because they would drive so close to me just to tell me, oh, your tail light's out. You know, that's an example of gaslighting, telling you something that is that is not. But the other, for with the flying monkeys, they're supposed to wear you out. See, the cluster B disordered person does not want to get their hands dirty. They don't like being locked up. There's one that I've been dealing with or managing, basically. She's been stalking me for literally uh, six years. Only for four years have I been aware that it was her. And... Any, because she can't, I've gray rocked her. She's, there's no contact. There's nothing. There was no relationship. There was no uh, insinuating of a relationship. There was no friendship of any kind. There was no nothing. Uh, so what she'll do, and I actually just had ex experience with this uh, the night before with one of the flying monkeys and the police had to be called because I had been fed up with it and I knew my rights and as a security officer, we're usually seen by the cops as having some type of integrity. So they, they take us seriously because we are considered officers. We don't have the same power as police officers, but we are considered officers in their eyes. And uh, so it, it, she sent one, and it's the third time that he's come around. The first time that I actually was able to catch him in the act. So what I do is I confront him about harassing. What flying monkeys are trained to do is to annoy you to the point that it drives you absolutely bonkers. 
right? So what he was doing initially was coming around me every time I went out to walk the dogs, there he was. So if I went out to walk the dogs six times a day, he'd be there. So he wouldn't come by me, near me, but he would always cross my path wearing the same clothes, whatever. So it's a mixture of gaslighting and uh, harassment. Anyway, um, I was livid and I have to admit that I almost got physical with this guy. I used to be a weightlifter and I'm getting back in shape. And so I'm kind of feeling myself because I'm like, I am so done with this. I have a right to walk the, my dogs wherever I need to walk them without being attacked because some cluster B feels that I'm not giving them enough attention. I confront the guy and he already knows me and that's, that was a giveaway. Now I can't, that's not something that I can share with the cops. One thing I've learned is to kind of play their game. You know, I have to talk like a cop. I have to talk like a flying monkey. You know, I have to, to go there because if I don't, they are going to see me as crazy. And actually when the cop showed up and I just, I got tired of doing it because it's not a form that I can, I'm a very honest person. I'm very transparent. What you see is what you get. If you don't like it, you can kick rocks. It's, that's just the way that I feel about it. I'm not, I've always been like this. There's, you know, I'm a good person. I'm a giver. Um, I'm a deep lover and I just, I, you know, and I'm transparent, you know, I don't, I've never seen any, I mean, you know, any reason not to be, especially in, in situations like this. So he gets really scared. He calls the police and I'm standing there. I'm filming the whole thing. I'm filming it. And I'm standing there waiting for the cops to come. Mind you, this guy had drugs out, drug paraphernalia out, because that's what these cluster bees use. This one is gang affiliated. That's why it's called gang stalking. This is what these Hispanic gangs use, you know, they, it's a t tactic that they use to take over neighborhoods and to kind of graft themselves in undetected. Sacramento, California is rife with the Nortanos and Sur 13 that are recruiting members of any kind, any nationality. Um, and I've heard this actually from people who know what's going on, but I've dr I had drawn my own conclusion just from observing uh, being on the streets for three years. So they're taking the homeless and everybody has this person's number. The homeless know that if you need something, if you need some drugs, maybe even a, a make some money for a night in the hotel or something like that, they're not going to set you up, right? They're like a narcissistic employer. You know, they are narcissistic employers where you're going to work a hundred times harder and I'm going to pay you less. So anyway, just to get back to it. He calls the, calls the cops and while he's calling the cops, I'm, you know, saying the address of where I'm located and come, come on. I said, he has drugs out. He had a, a, a backpack full of drugs that he hid and he's sitting there telling me, well, I don't, I don't even know you lady. Then suddenly goes, oh yeah, I know you. So while we're waiting for the cops, that was the number one giveaway. But when we're waiting for the cops, he calls another person, not the cops. And I'm, mind you, I'm about six to 10 feet away from him. And I'm keeping the camera on him and I'm doing a very little talking because I want to hear what he's saying. And so he calls this person. He goes, oh, so, you know, what, I'm, what, I'm, what should I do? That this is exactly what he said, you guys. This flying monkey said, what should I do? He waits and goes, uh-huh, uh-huh. And oh, okay, yes, ma'am. All right. And suddenly <clears throat> he walks away from me, crosses the street, takes his dog, leaves his backpack still with the other homeless flying monkey and walks in the opposite direction. And I kind of tr tread beh tra trail behind him a little bit. And uh, just to see, there was a car that was parked and it kept flashing its lights, but he didn't come in. He didn't go into the car. He just kept going. That was proof for me. That was proof that this guy was a flying monkey. And if I wouldn't have allowed what, cause I was, I, I, to be honest with you, I was gonna get physical with him cause I had just about had it. I had had it, I was done. I was done and I do have a lawyer. I've been paying for insurance <laughs> ever since I got my gun permit. I'm like, okay, you know, um, and, and, you know, it may sound cruel to other people. So, you know, but when you keep messing with a Virgo and you keep messing with a super empath, we're going to light you up. And I don't mean that, you know, in, it's just, 
I, especially with me, I have a lot, I have all the patience in the world until I don't, and then I'm done. And that was it because I go to work, I come home I with my babes, I do my creative work, I do my business, and that's all I desire to do. I keep to myself. And so when you have me having this person that's been stalking me for six years and harassing me and claiming that we're in a relationship when we've never been in a relationship, you hit your, you hit your bottom point, you know? And so anyway, with this flying monkey, his job was to harass me and to get me riled up enough to where he could call the cops in the hopes that I would be arrest, I would assault him and then be arrested. That's what the end goal was. It didn't end up happening. So he called his handler, the cluster B, asked what else to do. And his, what he was told was to walk away. So the cops came. I told them everything. Da, 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 it was over. Right. But with the with these flying monkeys, it, that's not only, you know, not harassment, gaslighting, um, name calling, slandering. They also are picked not just like this. These were two homeless guys. Right. And homeless people are used as well. But also the other type of flying monkey are the people who have access to your Social Security number, who have access to your bank statements or your bank records, your account, your business. You know, that's other ways that they will attack you, too. It won't be the narcissist that does it. The narcissist will convince somebody in their group, in their circle to get access to something and sabotage it. I had an experience that when I went to go, I put a, a bank account in a business, uh, signed up for a business bank account with Chase. Everything went fine. I didn't change anything within a, a, for a month. I kept getting calls from a, the bank employee who signed me up that, oh, you need to do this. We need to update this. We need to update that. And I asked, well, why do I need to update it? Because there's nothing that I've told you that has changed. I'm still doing the business type that I told you I was going to do. And so I ended up, uh, because I had a lot of money in there. So what I ended up doing was uh, closing the account. And I looked for reviews and I saw that other people were having the same effect. Now, it, you know, I have no way to know for certain, but after going through the gang stalking by these narcissists, and borderline personalities and psychopaths and, and the like, I know the signs and the patterns and I'm the only one that knows it because I'm the one that's living it. Right. So I don't debate that, but you know, so that's the, the flying monkeys purpose basically is to make sure that they can make you keep, keep you rather pliable for the narcissistic feeding. I'm not open because I've leveled up to a point where they can't reach me. So, but they still keep trying because these are people who have a compulsion to be repetitive. I call it looping and I'll go over that term in another video. Looping is basically, and there's a psychological term for it, but looping is basically when a person does something over and over and over again, right? They're not making, they haven't learned the first time. There's a Bart Simpson uh, scene where he keeps putting his hand on this electric buzzer and getting shocked. And then he's like, ah, and then he stops. And then he puts his hand on the buzzer again. He does this several times. That's what the cluster bees have their flying monkeys doing. Rep repetition. Because it's to create a pattern in your mind. Anything done uh, more than two weeks becomes a pattern. Then you start to, you know, then they want it to become a self-fulfilling prophecy, prophecy so that you just fall into it with no resistance because there's been a pathway created in your brain. With me, that cannot happen now because I've done the work. I've cleaned out my mental closets and attics. I still have a lot to clean, but the core, the core of it has, has enabled me to have sort of a shield and confidence around that. If these people aren't going to go away, they're everywhere in our society everywhere. They've been glorified up until right now. Now everything's coming out. So, you know, some of us are breathing sighs of relief, but anyway, the, the flying monkey has multiple purposes. The, the narcissist will use them. And again, basically it's just to keep you open for them spiritually, because naturally we're going to build up walls and resist this. And 
the narcissist, the borderline, you know, the cluster B personality disorder creature does not, does not like not being able to go where they want to go, especially when they consider it their property, quote unquote, you are their property and they feel that they have a right in their warped, perverse minds to do whatever they want to you. So that is what they attempt to do through the flying monkeys. You know, it was very strategic what I experienced the other night. And, you know, I'm glad that I, I got it on video. <laughs> so I may upload it. Uh, you know, I, I kind of feel like I'm, I, I want to upload all these attacks because this cluster B doesn't want to come to, to me physically. They know better. And I'm not a badass. I'm, I'm not, but I just, like I said, I get tired. And I think many of us do get tired, especially for me, since I was never in a relationship with this person ever lived with them for two months, was discarded gratefully and went about my business. That was it. And that any normal human being, spiritual being would have left it at that and gone about their business. But this person thought that they were conditioning me. They were grooming me. And we'll go into that process. Like she had done so many young girls, you know, I'm not a young girl and I'm not naive. Um, so she's been able to have her way with multiple targets and you know, it, it, they don't like being disappointed. So they will use flying monkeys, but now I, you know, especially because of COVID and you know, we got this election coming up and so much uncertainty, <clears throat> it's, it feels to me like spiritually, it feels like they're imploding on themselves. You know, um, karma is coming back to bite them in the butt and they don't know what to do with themselves because everybody's trying to survive and, you know, duck for cover. So they don't have that access right now. With gratefully, you know, that's a blessing. As I said, COVID actually has been a blessing in so many ways for us impasse and those who of us who, um, have been dealing with uh, cluster B personality disordered individuals. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, give me comments and uh, please subscribe and ring the bell for more videos and God bless.